Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover conditional operators with a whole ton of examples and some problems for you to solve. Now, every programming language needs the ability to conditionally do one thing or another. And we're going to execute different code depending upon different conditions using the keywords if, else, and elif. And elif, as you're going to see, is a shortened way of saying else if. And it's easy to understand why conditional operators are important. Consider, for example, if you went to a restaurant and you were asked whether you would want a Coke or a Pepsi, well, based on your decision, you would then be able to provide a choice. And we will be using both conditional as well as logical operators in our conditions. And here are the conditional operators you will be able to use, greater than, less than, greater than, or equal to, equal to, or not equal to. And I'm going to give you a whole bunch of demonstrations on how we can use them. So let's use the previous slide as a sample here. We'll say input, and then say pick one, and say Coke or Pepsi. Now we will expect some input from the user, and we're going to say if drink is equal to equal to, double equal to, Coke, and you're going to put a colon inside of there, and you see how that indented, everything that is indented after this if statement is going to be executed if this condition right here is true. So if that is true, the waiter in this situation would say, here is your Coke. Okay, simple stuff. Now we're going to do another condition, but instead of saying else if, Python has a shortened version of that, which, which is ELIF, or else if, you can call it whatever you want. All right, in this situation, let's say that they say Pepsi. Again, colon, indent. In this situation, we will then present them with a Pepsi. But what if they don't follow along and give us what we asked for? Well, in that situation, we can say else and perform an action that would be a default. And let's say that the default in this situation is to provide them with a water. We could then run this code, and it's going to say Coke or Pepsi. I'm going to say Coke, and it says here is your Coke. And we could run it again, and I could say that I want uh, something else, Dr. Pepper or something like that, and they don't have Dr. Pepper, and instead they just give you water. All right, so there is an example. And now what I want you to do is work your way through a new problem. And what we're going to do in this one is you're going to be taking what you've learned about conditional operators and previous videos, and I want you to make a calculator. Now, if you haven't watched the previous parts of this tutorial, you will need to, otherwise this won't make sense. And what you're going to do in this situation is you're going to accept two numbers that are going to be separated by an operator. So, for example, you're going to say something like enter calculation and if the user types in 5 times 6 you are then going to respond with 5 times 6 is equal to 30. So give it a go and see if you can solve this problem and feel free always to use any of the previous code covered in my tutorials especially in past videos if you need any help and like always, if you don't solve it, don't worry about that. The goal is just to get you to think in new ways. And then, of course, to understand the final solution, which I will show you right now. So what do I want to do? I want to be able to store a number and then an operator and then another number. And we're going to be using input, of course. So input and enter cal calculation and then we'll use our old friend split which can also split three values depending upon where spaces are we're going to then need to come in and convert our num1 into an integer instead of the string which it is by default we're going to do the same thing for num2 and now comes the if else and else statements so what we're going to do here is we're going to say if operator is equal to a plus sign well in that situation we want to print out that information so we'll say print curly brackets plus curly brackets which is equal to 
curly brackets, and then follow that up with format, and then just list out all of the values that you want to go in there in order. And you can go directly inside of here and go num1 plus num2, and it will work. Now what we can do is take that guy and copy it, and instead we're going to say else if, and we're going to have to put that back over here to the left. And the print statement needs to be indented. And here we will say subtraction and subtraction. And then we'll just change this right here. And that's good. And there's more conditions. Else, if it is multiplication, we will just change that likewise. And then we can come in and do division. And we're not going to do modulus in this situation. And then finally, we can say else, if they didn't provide any of the things that we told them we wanted, we will just say print, use, either, and then list all of the different operators that we will allow. And later in the tutorial, I'll show you how to basically cycle this so that if they enter the wrong information, you'll give them another opportunity, but at this point, we don't know how to do that. And if we run it, you're going to see enter calculation, and we could say 5 times 6, and it automatically calculates it for us. And it's also going to work for other different things, of course. So we could say 10 divided by 4, and it's just going to work. All right, so cool stuff. Hopefully you got that right. If not, don't worry about it. And now what I want to do is talk about logical operators. Now your logical operators are going to be used to combine conditions and the different logical operators are AND, OR, and NOT. An AND is going to provide a true answer if both conditions that lie on either side of AND are true, OR is going to provide a true if either of them are true, and NOT is simply going to convert all of your trues into falses and falses into trues. So let me give you an example here. What I want to do is write a program that is going to determine whether a birthday is important or not. And I'm going to use the following criteria to decide if a birthday is important or not. Just kind of a silly example, but it works. So the very first thing I'm going to do is ask for an age. So I'll say input and enter age. After I do that, if the age is both greater than or equal to 1, and less than or equal to 18, I'm going to give a true answer that means that this is an important birthday. How I structure this is I go if, and I can throw parentheses around this if that helps, age is greater than or equal to 1, and again, age is less than or equal to 18, again, colon. In that situation, I'm going to print out that this is an important birthday. Then I can say else if and do something similar. So we'll go if the age is equal to 21 or the age is equal to 50, colon again. Well, I'm going to say again that this is an important birthday. Then as another example, I could say else if not age is less than 65 and not is going to turn trues into falses and falses into trues. Well, in that situation, again, I will say this is an important birthday. And in all other situations, by default, I'm going to say, sorry, not important. And we can go and run this say something like 15, we'll say that's an important birthday, and then we'll say something like 43, and see that it is not an important birthday. All right, so silly kind of example, but the whole idea is just to demonstrate all sorts of new things. And now what I want you to do is take all that information you just learned and solve a problem. This time what I want you to do is to write some code that will help determine what grade someone should go to depending upon their age. And here is the criteria for determining that grade. So if the age is 5, what I want you to do is print out the message, go to kindergarten. If the age lies between 6 and 17, I want you to assign the grades of 1 through 12. And you're going to print out a message such as go to grade 6. 
And otherwise, if age is greater than 17, I want you to print out, go to college. There's also going to be an additional thing you're going to need to do, just because it makes sense, but I'm not going to tell you that up front. And if you want to see sample input, it's going to look something like enter age is equal to 6, and then you're going to print out go to grade 1. All right, so there you go. Give it a try. And as an added little test here, try to complete this whole entire program using 10 or less lines of code. Like always, feel free to use any previously covered code in this tutorial series and hope you get it right. All right, so now I will provide you with a solution. First off, we're going to ask for age again, and I'm going to automatically just cast this directly before our input statement. So I'm going to say enter age, just as I told you to do. After that, I want to handle if the age is less than five. Did you catch that? Didn't know if, I, if you did it or not, but either way, it's okay. So if the age is less than five, what you're going to do is say, too young for school. Else if the age is equal to five, in that situation, we're going to print that we want them to go to kindergarten. Go to kindergarten. So if a number lies between the values of 6 and 17, we can actually check them all with just one condition. And so we will do so. We'll say else if age is greater than 5 and age is less than or equal to 17. Well, in that situation, whoops, hit the wrong thing. Meant to hit the parentheses there. In that situation, we're going to say grade is equal to whatever their age is, minus 5. And then we will print out on our screen, go to grade and throw our parentheses inside of there. Use our old friend format here and drop grade in there where it needs to go. And otherwise, everybody else is going to get the same answer, which is go to college. Go to college. All right, save that, run it, see if it works. Five, go to kindergarten, good stuff. How about six, go to grade one, and try it again, and we will say something like 99, go to college. All right, so good stuff. Hopefully you got that right. And to close off this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the ternary operator. Now the ternary operator is going to be used to assign one value or another based on a condition. And it's going to follow this format, which is going to be the, the value if a condition is true. So condition is true. Then what we're going to have is an if, and then we'll have whatever the condition is, followed by else and then the value if the condition is false. Okay, so that's the format. I'll show you what it looks like and then you'll have no problem. So let's go age again, get some input from our user, and we'll say, what is your age? There we are. Based off of that, I'm gonna determine if they can vote or not. And how I'm gonna do that is with the ternary operator. So I'll say can votes value is gonna be true. This is the value assigned if the condition is true. I will then say if age is greater than or equal to 18, else false. And false is the value assigned if the condition is false. Go like this. And then we'll be able to come in and go print you can vote. And then we will put the answer after that. Run it. Enter the age, 16, you can vote false, run it again, age, 18, you can vote true. All right, so there's a whole bunch of information in regards to conditional and logical and a whole bunch of other different operators. There's a quiz underneath this video. Go take it to reinforce everything you've learned. And like always, please leave any questions or comments down below.